this Egyptian god is one of the most violent, bloodthirsty deities we've ever discussed on this show. And if the Egyptians were right about the afterlife, then you're definitely going to want to be on his good side. Unless you like the idea of having your face eaten by primates. If that's the case, you can just skip this episode. The deity I'm referring to is Babi, the chief of the baboons. He wasn't the only baboon god. My fellow mere mortals will be quick to point out other gods who had a baboon form, like Khonshu, the moon god, and Thoth, the god of wisdom. But Babi was the biggest and scariest because he held the fate of your soul in his hands. Also, the fate of your wiener. Before we get lost down that rabbit hole though, I want to announce that the newest line of Messed Up Origins merchandise has dropped over at MereMortals.store. We've got these super fresh embroidered hoodies sporting the Messed Up Origins logo, trucker hats, t-shirts, and of course, the embroidered Shut Up Derek tees. But we're doing things a little different this time around. In addition to producing channel merch, we plan to go beyond the Messed Up Origins brand and make Mere Mortals a way to express your appreciation of all things mythology and folklore. You can get a head start on that now with the Greek and Egyptian collections, but we've got more designs on the way, especially with the holidays coming up. Prime folklore and myth season. If you want to see our wares for yourself, just go to meremortals.store. I'll put a link in the description and pinned comment to save your thumbs from all that typing. But let's get back to Bobby the Baboon. Who is he and what does he do? As an underworld deity, Babi was considered the son of Osiris, the lord of the underworld, and his name could be translated to Bull of the Baboons, meaning he was the chief baboon, and that's a pretty big deal because the ancient Egyptians held baboons in high regard. They noticed that baboons stretch and chatter when they wake up to the morning sun, and this was interpreted as singing and dancing for the sun god Ra. As the first religious creatures, their language was also believed to be the natural language of true religion and it was even thought that Egyptian priests could understand them. The Egyptians believed that Babi had two jobs, to feast on the unworthy souls of the deceased and bestow the worthy souls with enough sex drive to last for eternity, which are two hilarious things to pray for. Great and honorable Babi, I humbly request that you accept this sacrifice in exchange for the eternal safety of my soul and the eternal use of my boner. Okay, they may have used different terminology, but that really is what Bobby's worshippers asked him for. If you know anything about baboons, you can probably guess why, but I'll spell it out for those who don't. Baboons, specifically Hamadryas baboons, are big fans of the S-E-X, and the Egyptians, who are known for deifying animals and assigning them domains that relate to their characteristics, did exactly that with Bobby. Almost all of the ancient representations of him include his wiener, and some have a big ol' set of balls, which, if you've seen BBC's documentary on the Hamadryas baboon, you'll know these are totally accurate portrayals. Nothing is exaggerated. Not one thing, and certainly not two things. But let's not sexualize Bobby too much, eh? After all, his schlong does serve other purposes. For one, he uses it as the deadbolt lock on the doors of heaven meaning he controls the underworld sky and how much light passes into it. And when Bobby isn't cock blocking the sun, he uses it as a mast for the boat that carries souls to Aru, the islands where the fields of reeds are located. I don't know how big that boat was, but I don't think it matters. We should be impressed. Don't act like you're not impressed. After a long day's work, Bobby could most often be found hanging out with his fellow baboons by the Duat's local lake of fire, maxing out on their favorite snack, the flesh of the unworthy. Hearts, kidneys, intestines, liver, any kind of entrails were good by these boys. And if you think that sounds terrifying, you'd be right. This was one of the worst case scenarios for ancient Egyptian souls, so they did everything in their power to avoid this fate. You see, according to Egyptian mythology, when a person died, their soul was brought to the duat by Anubis, and from there, they would journey to the Hall of Ma'at, the Hall of Truth, the final place of judgment for their soul. The reason I say final place is because they would be judged, challenged, and threatened a number of times throughout their journey, with one challenge taking place at the aforementioned Lake of Fire. When someone arrived at the Lake of Fire, the four fire-breathing baboons would deem them worthy or unworthy depending on if they were a selfish prick. People who were generous with their wealth, grateful for the food on their table, didn't lie, cheat, or steal, and gave offerings to the gods had nothing to worry about. It was the greedy, deceitful manipulators who suffered the wrath of the baboons. Unless their body had been buried with some cheat codes, the Egyptians 
believed it was possible to assist the deceased with their trials by inscribing magic spells on their coffins and the bandages the bodies were wrapped in. Another surefire method was to bury the body with a copy of the Book of the Dead, which included verbatim instructions on how to pass these trials. And check this out, I finally found a reliable translation of the Book of the Dead, and there's a passage about the four baboons in the Lake of Fire. In this passage, the dead guy, who mind you, is at risk of being torn to shreds by baboon gods, request they devour the evil that's within him instead, and then send him to a world full of tasty snacks. And they do it. To be fair, I don't think the outcomes written in the Book of the Dead were guaranteed, it was more wishful thinking, but they were believed to boost your chances of reaching eternal bliss, which is apparently a world where alcohol and snacks are delivered on demand. After passing by the Lake of Fire with the evil now cleansed from their body, the deceased would journey on until they reached the halls of Ma'at, where the final judgment took place at the scales of Anubis. If their heart was found to weigh more than the feather of truth, that meant it was still carrying sin, and so was handed over to Amit, the lion-maned crocopotamus demon who would devour it and obliterate their consciousness from existence. At least that was the case in some regions of Egypt. In other regions, it was Bobby who awaited the results of the final judgment and would eagerly feast on the entrails of the unworthy. As this line from the Book of the Dead states, O oh, ye gods who dwell in the hall of double Ma'at, who are without evil in your bodies and who live upon right and truth, deliver me from the god Bobby, who feedeth upon the entrails of the mighty ones upon the day of the great judgment. So if the prospect of having your heart devoured by a crocopotamus wasn't scary enough for you, maybe a giant baboon god will be. Which brings up a great comment question of the day. Which would you rather be eaten by? Let me know in a comment down below. Then make sure you sacrifice those like and subscribe buttons to the algorithm gods because we need their support to keep this ship afloat. Sadly, we don't have a giant baboon penis to hang our sails on, but I wish we did. I'll see you all again next Thursday when I dive into the folklore of skinwalkers, a creature from Navajo tradition. Until then, my name is John Solo, and remember, John shot first. Thank you.